Hello and welcome back to Take Refuge 3D and back to another episode of the latest in the betas for plasticity and honestly at the moment I can't even keep up with all the new features that have been added almost every other day at this point and I would guess that the 2025.2 stable release is very very imminent uh, I heard July but soon is what I, I would imagine for the stable release now um, you can only access the betas if you've got an active studio license and you do that through the unstable releases tab on the discord um, if you're in the market to buy a plasticity license don't forget to add the code refuge 10 at checkout to get a 10 percent discount off any plasticity license and if you're very brand new to plasticity you can get it for a 30 days free trial and you can check out the beginners modeling tutorial i just released making this sci-fi walkie talkie okay let's just crack into it i'm just going to trim out a couple of curves here and we'll just pull this guy out i'm going to shift t okay and i'm going to start with um, something that i think that is uh one of my favorite new features is that now when we fill it in edge we've got this tension um, slider here so it's almost like a sub decreasing kind of thing i really like it right and it's kind of like when you use the tension on the bridge curve and you'd think that this would make bridging uh using the bridge curve redundant in many cases but it really doesn't because i'm going to select these two here i'm going to duplicate those and let's just get rid of this whole loop okay I'm just going to get rid of this whole loop so we can now bridge these two together okay from there to there and you'll notice now we've got these little gizmos on here and they go right up to g3 so you can have they're a little bit small to see but you should be able to see it there so i can pull these out like so okay and i can choose any of them i can choose this one here and we can get that right back there we can bring this one right up like that and you can really get a lot more control so this new tension on the fillet is almost replacing the tension that we previously had to deal with over here and now we've got these great new gizmo sliders on here um uh, which is fantastic um and so then we could take this curve you know just duplicate this and we could shift f and we could sweep that all the way around there and just join it to our main solid and let's just hide our curves and you see there we've got a really nice um different style of edges but we've got a lot more control with our um we've got a lot more control with our our curves now and we've got a lot more control with our fillet so this is just going to speed things up a lot of the time so when you just need a basic tension slide you can do it with the fillet if you need a little bit more control over it you can use the gizmos um so this is really really cool when we were doing this the other thing is is um when we bridge this over this is locked in place but we can actually let's go like right up to g3 we can actually unlock these so that we can just control one side of it right so you can get a lot lot more control i mean that's a silly shape i don't know if that would be very useful but you can see that you've got a lot more control on that gizmo so if we go down to select we've got select all but we've got select all curves select all sheets and select all solids so um, if you're only trying to select the solids you could go you know um, select all solids right and so on and so forth so um the next thing is the boolean command is way way more advanced now so let's just get a, a cube and um, i'm just gonna fill it all the edges like so okay let's duplicate this okay and now we've got a whole bunch of new stuff in the boolean command okay so this is your normal boolean command as you would see it like that now we've got this new option called region here okay and that looks like it's doing a union all of a sudden but actually uh, what's happening is we've just kind of got three objects there now so um you can see how that would be useful you know um 
you could start to build up a lot of different things. And then if we go Q and down here, if we've got this new advanced tab, and you can do different things like so if we go empty here and then do that, we've now got a sheet with this guy um, hollowed out. So who knows what we might do with that? We could probably just <laughs> X nerves it back on and get a nice shape like that. OK, so that's cool. But if we go back another couple of steps, we can um, Q and if we go empty there and empty there, what we'll do is basically slice off a portion of this and we've got two sheets. So um, you'll see that that's uh, a sheet like that. So we could, I don't know, um, thicken this guy and thicken this guy. All right. And you've just really just been really able to quickly make a cut in there and build up your shapes. So I feel like all of these new commands that we're getting or new uh, additions to the existing commands are really going to be able to speed up our workflow. So on top of this, there's a bunch of new quality of life commands. So yeah, there's a bunch of new quality of life commands. So let's take a, uh, a curve like this and we want to extend a point. We can extend it to this uh, new body. So that's really cool. And um, if we look at this extend now, where it says um, extend, we've got this extend up to, so we can select the tar target body like that. Um, in this case, it didn't work, but basically everything that has this functionality now has this uh, in the dialog box, where previously it was sort of, you had to guess. Okay, so that's really cool as well. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you is uh, a new one. Um, well, it's not a new one. We'll just press B to make that a single object. And I'm going to duplicate this across that. So imprint for bodies. Now, if we go and choose the imprint command, so we're going to select this object first, because this is the object that we want the other objects to be imprinted onto. So we're going to go imprint, and then we're going to, um, well, we select this one, and then this one, and this one, and we go imprint. And now when we hide these, we will notice that we can use multiple bodies where previously we were just able to use um, one. So that's all good news. Now, another um, thing is that um, now we can also, if we just select a bunch of faces and we go unjoin, it also works on multiple bodies as well, um, or it should do. Right, there we go. So we've unjoined all those faces and we can uh, see that here by hiding different faces. So that's really useful because obviously uh, if you have to go one by one, that was really, really a pain. Now, another cool multitasking feature is let's just say look, we've got this one here. Uh, I'm just going to put that there and let's just make a... Uh, something like this and just bring that here I'm going to press five to go into everything mode now you may know that you can um left click and control to cycle through so you can cycle that through those um different objects there um and then you can select the one that you want right so that's all cool so you left click and then you scroll you left click and then you scroll your mouse wheel. And now we've got this little um, dialog box that shows up with the names of the objects. Um, alternatively, a new one is if you control shift left click, you can get the uh, different objects. So let's go into um, four and we're under solid mode. And we, we should have two occluded objects there. And if we control shift left click, it's a little bit fiddly this one. We've got one box. And now we've got two boxes there. That one's kind of highlighted. So if we control shift left click, I don't know. This one's a little bit, maybe it's a little bit buggy. So still the right click, um, so left click and um, scroll the mouse wheel is great. But now we can select from the list as well, which is awesome. Okay, so just one of those quality of life things that's just got a little bit better. I do think this, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, um, but I should be getting a list of two objects with an occluded object there. 
Um, so I have no idea what that is um, going on there with the control shift uh, left click. Maybe it's just something that needs a little bit of ironing out. And in the material um, shader mode here, we've got two new shaders. One here is to, it's kind of like to show the, the front and back normals. So if I delete this face here, we can see that the red is the back side or the inside of the object and the blue is the outside. And this is conforming with uh, Blender's behavior or actually until recently Blender's behavior had blue on the outside and red on the inside. But now Blender has it just red on the inside and I personally used to change my blender to get rid of the blue anyway so it'll be cool if we could turn this blue off just as a heads up because I already know what the outside looks like I only really want to know if uh, something's on the inside and is uh, an inverted normal so if we could be able to turn the blue off in settings here um, that would be awesome um, now the other shader is a topographical shader so you can set like the different so basically now I've got this on I can only see the wireframe all right then I turn X on and it shows everything on an X axis um, if I turn Y on I get that and then if I turn Z on I get this sort of wireframe here especially if you've got crazy shapes that you want to have a look at you can kind of easily visualize um, curvature and things like that and move this down and move it across right and we can start to see that shader and how things are bending around and you can also change the scale of it so you can have um, you know just a bit like that so this is just another useful way just like this and this and this for viewing and this for viewing um, curvature and and how it all works there so if we go into rendered mode and we go to assets panel we've got this new um, previews on our materials including the hex metal which if you didn't watch my last videos uh, the material that I made for the uh, my little contribution to plasticity so um, I hope you enjoy that um, so that's really cool that we've got um, these previews because it's a lot easier to see. I really like the sandstone material actually. Um, I think it looks really cool, especially if you put this HDRI on and it's, it's really it's really a nice one. Okay, so um, moving on, let's put our normal shader back on and just moving on, um, we've got a new command which is to, it's basically curvature combs. So um, if we go to this new command here and we go F M E A measure curvature. Okay, you can see the curvature of this and we can also increase the scale of it. So you can see the curvature of your object and um, or of your curve. So let's see if we can do it with this measure curvature. Okay, we've got that there and you can see how it gets warbles. So another way that um, measure curvature has been implemented. So let's just take this and um, let's take another curve over here and let's just go into one or let's just shift B and bridge that. Um, if we go down to analysis here, um, we can actually see the curvature combs on our uh, bridge curve or our bridge edge, right? So that's really useful. Um, especially if you're trying to get nice smooth surfaces. So the, all these examples I'm using are pretty basic, but when you've got something just when you've got something that looks a bit janky, try and run the command and see what happens and you'll be able to very easily um, see where you've got problems and then maybe that'll help you be able to troubleshoot your edges. okay? So also um, just with the class A stuff and I'm like way out of my depth with the class A stuff, but um, there's a couple of new things. So the align command. So if we choose these two and we type in align, um, you can now hold down control to see the original target object was. Okay. And if we add degrees to this, um, we can blend extra rows. And if we tab into G2, right, um, you can, um, we'll just add a whole bunch here. You can, you can um, change the, input influence that might be too many 
and you'll be able to see that we can move this around here so um look once again i'm out of my depth uh i'd love to learn more about class a surfacing when i get some time but um i think this will be useful to people i can see it's doing something don't ask me how uh is a good way to use it because it's just way out of my depth and um finally um let's just uh make a cube and we'll give this a fillet and we'll give it a g2 it'll probably think for a second and finally um with this square command all right you can see we've got these um uh sides so we can g2 that but now they've all got their own tension commands so you can also see that we've got the um, continuity analysis on you can also just come down to this tab and turn it off um, but if you are trying to get like you know can you know contiguous edges um, you can mess with these and obviously this is not going to be a g2 but we can get there somehow okay and now we've got this more or less working and we can get that on there so just more tools for class a surfaces out there that are there and just remember a line um and square i believe are powered by xnerb so a studio license only um and look that's just a few of the things there is a lot more things uh in the betas you can check out the unstable releases tab um that i haven't mentioned here a couple of cool things um to do with surfacing as well and and modeling but um yeah just i think this will be the last beta video i do before the stable release and expect a stable release video from me in the very near future hopefully knock on wood but i would imagine that i don't know if nick's going to be adding more features but um i'd imagine there'll be bug fixes and maybe a couple more features and then we'll be on stable release 25.2 sometime in the near future all right see you guys in the next one Tschüss.